Hey guys, Spencer Kaufman here, teaming up with How To Video Channel. Today, we are going to show you how to customize and edit the master pages in your Adobe InDesign book. Now, hopefully you have already laid out your book, you got everything all put together, you have the page size right, the margins, bleeds, gutters, everything is set. If you haven't, go ahead and check out the article that I wrote on it and also take a look at the other YouTube video we have. We've got a whole series coming out on how authors and graphics designers can take their book in Adobe InDesign from start to finish. So go ahead and check that out. Now to get to the master pages, what you are going to do is go over here on the right side of the screen. There's a little tile that says pages. You can click on that and right here you see a master. Now the letter A is default for the document. So if yours is a different, that's fine, don't worry about it, but typically it's gonna be something master, probably A. So then you would just double click right here and it will take you directly to your master pages. Or if you do not have this pages tile over here, you can go up to window and then go all the way down here to pages and you can click on this and it will open it up over here for you. Double click on your master and here it is. Now, master pages are the pages that will, whatever you change here, will show up within your entire document. So if you have 100 pages in your book and you forgot to put the page numbers down at the bottom or something and you wanna do it on every single page, you can do it right here on the master pages because this will apply to the entire document. So you want to be careful what you do here. You can always undo it, but you know you don't want to mess things up on here and then screw up your whole document. So the first thing you're going to want, let's say you want some page numbers on here. Okay, what you're going to do is go over here to the type tool. And then you can just drag a little box down here. Okay, we'll get it positioned in the right spot. Move it over here. You can see there's our line for the center. We'll just drop it right there. Go back to our type. Click on it. Okay, now instead of just typing a one here, we because if we did that, then that one is gonna show up on all the pages. We want it to automatically update the page number on every single page. So it's going to count one, two, three, four, etc., all the way up until the end of your book. You're going to go up here to type. Down to the bottom, insert special character. Then you're going to go over here. You have a lot of different options. We're going to choose markers. Okay. Then you go over here, current page number. Click it. And you can see here a little A showed up. Now, this is because it is the A master page. So that A means that it'll be automatically updated on every page. Now, you can leave it right where it is, or you can customize it. I kind of like to put it over here in the center. I also like to make it a little bigger, so I'll highlight it and bump the font up to maybe 16, and that's that. So there we go. We've got the page number on your book, and it is consecutively on every page. However, it is currently only on the left page. You also want it on the right page. So to do that, we have a cool little trick. You can go up here and grab the selection tool, and then you're gonna press Option or Alt, depending on whether you have a Windows or a Mac. And then you're gonna click on this, and you can see here my little pointer got double. See, it when I hold down the Option key, it gets an extra little arrow under it. That means copy, so I'll click it, and I'm going to drag it right over here to the right side of the screen. And there we go. You can see those green lines telling me it's all lined up evenly. If I am not, you can see there's only the one. So there we go. I'll just let go. And now I have the page number on both sides of my book, and it is laid out symmetrically so it'll look nice on all the pages in my book. Okay, the next thing we want to do is typically I'd like to put the title up here. So I'm gonna grab this type tool once again. We'll go up here and I'm gonna drag myself a little box, grab the selection tool, move it over so it's in the center, then I can get the type tool again. Now, you can put whatever you like around here. You know, you can put the title, you can put a subtitle, you can put your author name, you can put the publisher name, you could put a phrase, it doesn't matter. This is something that is gonna be symmetrically the same on every single document. So whatever you put here 
it's going to be all the same. Now, to do this, you can either type out, you can type out book title. Okay, and then uh, I'd like it, you know, in the center, obviously, and maybe we'll bump up the font to, uh, you know, 14, maybe 16. Okay, so there. Now, that will say book title on every single page. It will not be changed. It will not be updated because this is something you typed in. It's not automatic like we did with the page number. If you would like to automatically place the book title, you can do so. We'll just highlight that. That means whatever we select, it'll be replaced. Then we're going to go up here to the type menu. We'll go down here, and instead of going to insert special character, we're going to go to text variables. Then we'll go over here to insert variable, and you can see there are a bunch of different options right here. What we're going to choose is file name. So now this will work if you have titled your file the same thing as your book or whatever you like up there. So if you titled your your file, uh, book title, and then you want book title to show up on every single page automatically, you can hit that, and you can see here it just placed my file name up there. My document is titled right now. It's untitled too because I haven't titled it, but now it put that right up there on the top. So it's just like the text. See, it's exactly like if you typed it in. It, it didn't come up as some automatic thing like the A. It just said it placed it in there as text. So you could either use the text variable and place it there, have the document place it there, or you can simply type it out yourself. I prefer to type it out myself because then it's easier and I know exactly what's being put there. So that is how to get your book title up there on the top. You could also put your author name or something else. doesn't matter. Uh, the final thing that I like to do is go ahead and take over here on the right side is something similar. Now, you can see here the boxes are different sizes, so we can just kind of drag it up. And you can see, look over on the left, and the little arrows appeared, and a green line came up. So now it tells me that that's the exact same height as that other box. And then I can take it like this and get it right in the middle, and again, those lines appear, and they drop there. Now, alternatively, you could do the Alt, Click, and Drag, and that would duplicate it. But then that untitled to text would be there, so you'd have to replace that, which is no big deal. But now you know both ways that you can do it. You can either alt click and drag it over and it'll be the same, or you can build your own box and move it around and the lines will show up exactly the same so that you can make sure that it's symmetrical on both sides. Let's say we want to put the chapter heading or the chapter title, whatever you've titled your chapters. You can either have it be chapter one, chapter two, chapter three or you can have it be whatever you have those specific chapters be, you know, like chapter one, how to, uh, you know, be an advanced marketer, chapter two, different marketing strategies, chapter three, and so on. So you can have those headings be up here, or you can have the chapter number itself or whatever text you want, really. So to do that, you're going to go over here to type once again, and we're going to go to text variables, insert variable, and here again are all these options. Now chapter number, that would just put numbers like page number. It'll put one, two, three, etc. And then of course any of these other things, the, the creation date is obviously the date you made the file, image names would be an image on the page, last page number, modification date would be when you changed it, output date would be when it you exported it or saved it, and a running header would be whatever header you have within your document. So you can experiment with these, choose whichever ones you like, see how it looks in your document, and then go from there. If there isn't one here for you, which typically will be the case, you don't worry, just go over here to define. You're going to make your own variable. So click that, a little pop-up comes up, and this is all the text variables we just saw. So what you want to do when you make your own is choose running header because that means you can put your own text in there and it will just put it up at the top. It's a, a running header across all your pages. So you're going to choose that, go over here and click new. You can see it gave it the name variable one. You can change this to whatever you like. So you can make it be chapter heading, chapter title, whatever, author name, it doesn't matter. Whatever you choose here though, this is going to be uh, put on, a, on all the pages, and it's going to take something from within your document. So if you choose uh, 
you know, have it to be the running header and you want it to be chapter heading, it's going to choose a chapter heading and put it on all of them. So you would go to type and then we have, you know, running header paragraph style. So leave that alone. Style. Now this is the critical part. So right now it's on basic paragraph. Now I haven't set up any paragraph styles in this document. So for you to put your chapter heading up there, you're going to want to create a paragraph style for the chapter heading. And to do that, it's very simple. Um, but what you would do is hit this drop down and then you can select where you want. Now, if you didn't create one and you're already in this, don't worry, you can just hit new paragraph style and a whole thing comes up. It's kind of complicated here uh, because this you have to build it from scratch. So if you want to dive into that and try it out, you can do that. Otherwise, what you are going to do is go back to your regular document, go to a page, type out your chapter heading, get the font all exactly like you like it, put it in the center, put it on the side, wherever, the right font, right text, however you like it, bold, italics, doesn't matter. Then you'd go over here to your paragraph styles tile, click it, and then you can save your selection as a new paragraph style. Once you've saved it, it will show up in here. You can click and then you can choose chapter heading. So then you will be able to have that be your running head in the top of your page. Now you will want to choose this, use first on page or last on page. So this would be if you have that heading more than once within a, a section, which one is it going to grab? Usually you're going to want to choose last on page, um, but you can experiment with this. So put your heading on there, choose first on page, see how it goes, then look at your document and see if it's in the right spot. If it's not, last on page, try it again. It's kind of a lot of little playing around in order to get it perfect. The rest of this stuff you're going to leave alone, text before, text after, you're going to leave this. Uh, if you have punctuation in your heading and you don't want like a question mark up in the header, you can go ahead and delete the end punctuation. If you want them to be all cap locks up on the top, but you don't want it there, you can, you know, you can change this all uppercase, all lower, you could title it, you know, you can play around. There are a lot of different options, but anyway, when you get that all set up, then you're going to simply hit okay. Now you have variable one in there. You can hit done and then you have saved it. So now what you'll do is go to type text variables, insert variable, and here is our new variable one. And you can see there it is variable one. So that means that it will say whatever you put on your pages right up at the top. It's not going to say variable one. It will say whatever you type. This is why it is important for you to define your own paragraph style for your heading only, because if you have a bunch of text typed out in that same paragraph style, you're going to be all messed up. But anyway, once that's done, you now have your master page completely set up. Again, play around with it, get used to it, uh, do some different functions, check it out. And, and with trial and error and a little bit of time and dedication, you can learn everything and you can have your master pages be all set up and nice beautifully so that they reflect the same on every single page. Be sure to join us for more videos. Like I said, we've got a whole series coming out on everything that you can do. So if you have any questions or you need any help with this, go ahead and put it down in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe to this channel so you can continue getting updates on how to build your book in InDesign. Like I said, we've got more coming out. We've got articles that go with all of these. So if you're more of a reader, you can read through it with pictures. And if there's anything you'd like to see us put out for you, anything that you're struggling with or you need help with, go ahead. Like I said, put it in the comments. We'll do our best to address it.